welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The deadline for comment on the draft integrated resource plan is nearly upon us. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about some of the reaction to the plan. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What are some of the main areas of contention around the draft IRP? Well, I think obviously because some technologies have been left out, that's going to be an area of contention. So we know that the least cost plan as outlined in the uh, in the draft document is a mix of solar PV, wind and gas. Gas often being used as a proxy for other flexible generation technologies that can come in quickly to respond to the variability associated with wind and solar. So technologies like coal and nuclear, for instance, are left out. That's quite a major change for South Africa that's really a coal dominant country and uh, I suppose there, were, there will be some resistance um, to that because we've got big stakeholder groups that are involved in both those industries. And the other areas of contention relate to the policy adjustments to the lease cost. So we know the lease cost, as I mentioned, was solar, wind and gas, but the policy adjustments uh, cater for two coal-fired IPP projects, uh, cater for 2,500 megawatts of imported hydro from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they also, there's also a sustaining of the limits on renewable energy. So solar, every year you could only add 1,000 megawatts of solar PV and wind only 1,600 megawatts of, of wind. Now that's not immediately a problem because we've got, uh, as we know, we've got too much capacity in the system and, and we're going to be adding at a much slower pace and at a, at a lower scale than we would have had under the 2010 version of the RP. So it doesn't make much difference up to 2030 but beyond. 2030, it would make a major difference if we sustain those limits. So those are some of the high level points of contention, the technology, the technology costs used and the assumptions used, and then those policy adjustments. And then finally, you know, it's not just the decommissioning of the coal-fired power stations, but can we actually factor into an integrated resource plan? One, demand growth, which we haven't really seen since 20, 2007. And uh, can we factor in Eskom's plant availability at 80%, which is, is hard-coded into, um, into the draft IRP? We haven't seen that for many a year. So Eskom is continually performing well, but, but low the uh, energy availability factor of 80%, usually in the 70 to 80% to range. And if, that is not, if they're not going to perform at that level, it does change the supply side options uh, into the future. What are the implications of making further adjustments to the IRP? Well, the Department of Energy make it clear that any deviation from the lease cost is obviously going to add cost. Now, that doesn't mean you don't make policy adjustments. In fact, in 2010, the policy adjustment that was made was specifically there to cater for new renewable energy, these, uh, these technologies that we didn't know much about at that stage, which were at that stage were also very expensive. But we made a policy adjustment specifically to cater for a new renewable energy uh, in the plan. And we've seen the results of that. Um, we've started with very high costs for solar PV and quite high costs for wind. And those are now come down to what, uh, to around that 62 cents a kilowatt hour in the last bid round, which was the expedited bid window, which was ironically never actually closed, but was procured, um, or the bids came in at that level. So uh, we no, we're not actually finding that low cost in the system at the moment, but we, we have seen that that policy adjustment actually worked for South Africa. So the issue would then be to weigh up whether you can include some of these other policy adjustments, and it would need to be rational and in line with other government policy. So for instance, part of the reason for integrating renewables in 2010 that was that we could see that the commitments were, were going to have to be made around our, our emission levels around our coal-fired plants. We had a, a very coal-dominant system of over 90%, close to 100% was coal, really, in the electricity system. So we, ha we, and we could see the world was changing around that. And uh, it was rational to make a policy adjustment for technologies that were lower emission. Whether it would now be rational to make policy adjustments for technologies that aren't cleaner and are more expensive is uh, going to be a matter for much debate and possibly even a matter for legal adjudication. What, in your view, is Cabinet likely to decide when they deliberate on the final IRP? Well, they have to keep the balance in mind uh, around what is good for South Africa and South African economy and for job creation 
as well as what's good for the electricity system. And I think there's a quite a nice alignment starting to emerge between uh, what is good for South Africa and what is good for the electricity system in the sense that our least cost um, generation into the future is this much lower carbon, um, much cleaner technologies of renewables. So we tick the box very nicely in terms of our climate commitments. In fact, we'll beat, uh, beat our, t our Paris commitments if we start rolling out at the level uh, that uh, in terms of the least cost scenario, we'll actually beat it by some way. And there might be even some headroom because we can see with what happened in South Korea recently around the United Nations and the desire to move not to a, a two degree world over pre-industrial uh, temperatures, but to a one and a half degree world, which is going to put pressure on all countries to maybe make even firmer commitments. Uh, than what we have. And in fact, South Africa's commitment uh, under the RPCC or under those scenarios of, of uh, global warming don't actually cut it. So we, we, would be, we would be vulnerable, I think, to a more stiffer regime. And then obviously, uh, is the power system going to be um, stable and balanced? Is the power system going to be least cost? Because as, as we know, consumers have had to bear massive rises, step change in, in tariffs. And I think what we, the message we're getting, especially from the large intensive, in, in electricity intensive businesses, that we can do anything, but we can't do expensive. So I think cabinet's going to have to have that front and center on their mind, especially given that electricity needs to be an enabler of higher levels of investment in this uh, and job creation in this economy. And if you've got very expensive electricity, it's going to be hard to attract that sort of investment. And we know what the target is. The target is $100 billion over the next five years. And uh, I think the world and domestic investors, global and domestic investors, are going to be looking at that. And they're going to be raising this issue probably at the President's uh, Investment Conference, which starts next week. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching. And join us again next time for more news analysis.